Happy New Year everyone, nice to see you again, welcome back to the channel, it's 2024 so it's that time where we have to look back on 2023 and what happened, what went well, what didn't go well and the general state of the union for the Aquarium Adventures channel. So without further ado, here it is, £3,582. That is what my YouTube channel brought in last year in 2023. If that's all you came for... There's your answer. Now, obviously, that is before tax. It doesn't include any stock or stuff that I've had to cost that have gone into running the channel. That's just purely the revenue, and that's what it is. If we break that down a little bit further, uh, the three main categories that bring money into the channel is AdSense. So that's what YouTube pays me. So YouTube paid me £2,377. My website, where I sell fish food, merch, things like that, that brought in £1,061. And then affiliates, so if I include a link in the description to some products or fish food or whatever it might be, and Amazon or whoever it is pays me a little bit of a commission, £144. So... That's all the money that came into the channel last year. There were a few freebies, like we get a few lights and things from product placements and sponsorships and that kind of thing, so I haven't counted them. I've given most of them away, so that fair enough, I think. So that's what it is. Certainly not inspiring retirement from my proper job yet. So there you have it. That's what we get. Um, this is a channel that currently has 17.4 thousand subscribers, so not a large channel, but not a tiny channel. Um... It's actually gone down from last year. So last year we made £3,692 from all those things. So that's a drop of 3% in total revenue. And to be fair, that's to do with the website sales. So I haven't really been promoting that at all. So they have dropped a little bit. AdSense was up on last year. Affiliates is up on last year. It's just the website isn't. So it's down a little bit. And the question that often gets asked about that is, is it worth it? Um, and the answer is going to be different depending on your own particular point of view. So for me... Um, it's fun. I enjoy doing this. So yes, it's worth it. I'd probably do it if I wasn't getting anything at all. So you've got to keep that in mind when you think about these things. In terms of what the channel has produced content-wise, there were 60 videos, 51 live streams, and 10 shorts. So not a lot on the shorts front. Um, if I kind of average them out, the, the videos, the long-form videos, they're about 10 minutes each on average. The 51 live streams, they are two hours, so every Friday I do a live stream for two hours, and shorts is kind of nothing. So there's about 112 hours of content in there. Um, to produce that content, the long-form videos, I use an average of about five hours to, to shoot them. So that's everything including shooting the video, editing, publishing, all the things that go alongside that, as well as things like because the website brings in revenue, all the packaging of the foods or the or sorting all that, I've included that within there as well. There's about 400 hours worth of effort in there, which, when you work that out, it's kind of just under £9 an hour, so not great in terms of a career choice. But still, not to be sniffed at, I suppose. But the question I have to ask myself is, is it worth it? And a lot of the times you have to think about, is it really work? I'm doing this as a fun hobby. This is fun for me. The Friday nights, I really enjoy them. I get to hang out with many of you. We've got a community there. We play games, we do quizzes, we give away things. I haven't included the giveaways in those either because they cost me money, so it probably brings that down again. But it's fun. Uh, I'm, I'm essentially being paid to drink beer on a Friday night. In terms of how that stacks up against previous years... Um, 2021, 22 and 23 is when I really started tracking these stats in these yearly videos. Um, so I'll put that up on screen now. You can see what the growth over the last few years has been. And working out in terms of growth, the views, we've got 17.4% growth. Hours are up 12.2%. Subs have risen 4% and revenue has gone up 8.7%. All going in the right direction but not as much as I wanted. In previous years, I've set myself goals. So last year's goal was to get all those growth or to get some of those growth statistics up to 20%. Nearly got there with views. Um, views is the most important one in my opinion. So the fact that we just missed out on that, I think I'm going to take that as an, an almost win. I'll be happy enough with that. We nearly got there with views. Um, the fact that hours and subs are still going up and they're going up against last year's rises again. So this, is, this isn't from zero to this, um, these are all good. Just keeping them above zero is always good. So everything's going in the right direction. And then in previous years, I also set myself some goals. So last year's goals were, I had noticed through my analytics, 
that most of my top performing videos in 2022 were actually made in 2020, which in and of itself isn't necessarily a bad thing. So the fact that you can have this kind of greenfield content which lives on for years to come, that's always good. So it's nice to have that in the bank, knowing that I've got content there if my later stuff's not as good. Some stuff will keep things ticking over, but you do want some new stuff to be ticking over to show that you're going in the right way. So I set myself a target of having at least five of my top ten videos of last year being in my top ten videos of last year. No, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> five of my top ten videos from last year being made and released last year. And we did it. Just. We scraped five. Uh, the other goals that I set myself was, obviously, I wanted that 20% growth. We didn't quite get there. We got nearly there with views, but we're way off on other ones. And then the last one was I wanted a waterproof mega tank. <laughs> the fact that these guys are in here shows you that we didn't quite achieve that one. But you never know, for 2024, we might get there. That is my stats for the year. It's in the state of the union for how the channel's performing. It's mediocre at best. I've got to be honest, uh, I still enjoy doing it, so I think that's the main thing. The main takeaway is, is it worth it? Depends on whether you enjoy it or not. Is it worth it as a business? Absolutely not. Because I'm just not that focused on the success of the channel. It is a hobby. This is something that I do in my spare time while I'm doing my other hobby. My first hobby is fish keeping. My second hobby is YouTubing. So I can't have one without the other, really. Can I make a living off it? Clearly not. Um... But that isn't the drive of this channel. If that was the drive of this channel, then maybe I would do things a lot differently. I would be looking at um, different ways to optimise the content, whereas this is more about just enjoying my hobby. The first hobby being fish keeping, the second hobby being YouTubing. I enjoy doing these things. It's not about um, maximising the amount of growth and revenue I can get. Of it. Obviously, it's nice to set goals. But that's just not the ultimate goal at the end of the day. If I wanted to do that, there might be things that I would do differently, which might change the landscape a little bit. There are some very clear, and there are lots of YouTube channels out there telling you how to grow a YouTube channel. So I won't pretend to tell you what to do. But if I was to take some of those things on heart, it would be looking more into my analytics to see what kind of things work. And it's very much double down on the things that work and cut out the things that don't. But if you look at my content, the videos I enjoy making are what keeps me here. So the fact that you like some of them and don't like other ones doesn't really matter to me. I'm still going to make the kind of videos that I like. I like to try new things every now and again. If some of them work, then great. But I'm going to keep doing the things that I want to do because that's the hobby for me. It's not the ultimate goal of going viral with every video. Otherwise, I would have to do things very differently. I do think there are some things which help aid my enjoyment of this, so I like to see improvement. So the reason I'm setting myself some goals is I like to see things progressing. So, yes, I would like more views, more subscribers, and that kind of thing. And I do have some kind of aspirations in that way, where I look at things like... Um, production value. Mr. Beast says this all the time, that if you just take every video that you do and make the next one a tiny bit better, so improve one thing, whether that's a big thing like upgrading your equipment, getting a better microphone, camera, lights, sound, all that kind of stuff, or it might just be spending an extra two minutes editing, cut out another um or an air from a video. That in and of itself, when you make a hundred videos, you'll be improving a hundred things so it's definitely going to increase your production value but with that said one of my mantras for when i make videos is that done is better than perfect but it's not better than crap and what i mean by that is i don't want to put out rubbish but i also don't want to spend forever editing a video i mean at the end of the day i'm making videos about fish and fish tanks and aquariums how polished can they be so done is better than perfect as in just get it out there but if it's terrible Nobody's going to watch it, and I'm not going to be proud of it. Not that I'm proud of a lot of my videos, but you know what I mean. Authenticity. So you'll probably see more failures on my channel because I'm not very good at DIY, at aquarium keeping. I'm not the most knowledgeable or expert person in the world. So you see me struggling through doing things, finding things out, learning things, all that kind of stuff. I think that's important for me because it shows a side of the hobby you don't often see in YouTube, for better or for worse. Um, you get the warts and the all. The warts and the all? The words sounding similarly to that.
But as I said before, I do want to get better. So I have to look at what areas I can improve on for 2024. So for this next year, I start by looking at the areas I'm terrible at. I'm terrible at self-promotion. I don't push my channel anywhere. I'm terrible at collaborations. I never reach out to people. A man who makes video on internet says he's introvert. I know that doesn't fit, but, you know, I'm in my own little bubble here. I'm quite happy with this. So I'm going to push myself to get out a little bit more, visit some more places, do some more fish shop tours, meet some of you, maybe get together, and go to events, all that kind of stuff. Maybe do more collaborations if you can. So if you're interested in doing a collaboration, reach out and maybe we can do something together. Um, just put myself out there a bit more and continuing with that tiny improvement every single time. Hope you found that in some way useful um, just to see what goes on a little bit behind the scenes here, what makes the Aquarium Adventures channel tick or not tick, as the case may be. Um, if you like this kind of stuff, there is a button down there where you can press like and subscribe and all that good stuff. But if it, yeah, if you find it useful, let me know in the comments. What are your goals? What would you like to see from you, from me, the space in general? Always interested to know that. If not that, come and join me on a Friday night. I know this is an aquarium channel, but Friday night's more just about hanging out together. We do a quiz, we give away prizes, we have a bit of chat about all kinds of random things. And I test out some weird beers, which is always very nice. Um, see you there, Friday, 9pm UK time. Come and just hang out, and if not, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and a happy new year! Bye!